Hello, good evening and welcome to The Stand, our weekly program that allows journalists here at uh, Media General an opportunity to have their take on major running issues that make headlines throughout the week. My name is Parker Siasar. You can watch us live on your DSTV channel 279 and also we are streaming live on Facebook. Tonight, I'll be joined by Emmanuel Kwame Amu, an online editor, and Rosina Ousua Foster, who's an editor with our sister station, Onya FM. Martin Sirudata will also join us uh, later in the discussion. But before we delve into matters for tonight, uh, let's begin with local news highlights. Operations at the National Ambulance Service, Foster Anson Brijan says a health ministry policy does not allow for ambulances to be given to government health facilities for keeps. According to him, all ambulances managed by the service are dispatched upon request by health facilities for emergencies. Also, President Akufado joined the Ghana Police Service to commemorate the Police Memorial Day. The flag and wreath laying ceremony at the National Police Training School was to honor eight police officers who have lost their lives in the line of duty this year. Also, a group concerned youth of Agona Suedro in the central region has embarked on a protest to register their displeasure over the poor state of roads uh, within the township. This is the second protest in three weeks over roads in the town. The Director of Public Prosecution at the Attorney General's Department, Yvonne Atakra Obobisa, has called for the total overhaul of the Criminal and Offences Act at the launch of the campaign to decriminalize party petty offences in Accra. She said many of the offences in the Criminal and Offences Act have become irrelevant and must be expunged. And Senior Minister Yao Safamafo is urging Ghanaians to see the Ghana Beyond Aid agenda as a national and not a political project. In a speech read for him at the launch of the 71st annual year New Year School in Accra, he maintained the agenda is a non-partisan call to harness the country's resources for economic transformation. Right, welcome back to The Stance, uh, live here from our studios at Adesawa in Kanda, Accra. This is The Stance, our weekly program here on TV3, where our journalists get the opportunity to share their views and opinions on running national issues. My name is Parkwis Yassari. We're live on your DSTV channel 279 and also streaming live on Facebook. We just brought you a highlight of local news making headlines. Let's find out what's been happening on the international front today as well. And two former Guinea-Bissau Prime Ministers have advanced to a presidential runoff vote with incumbent Jose Mario Vaz finishing a distant fourth after a tenure marked by infighting and corruption scandals. Domingos Simos Pereira finished first with 40% and Omaro Sissoko Mbalo came second with 28% in the November 24 first round poll. Because neither passed the 50% required to win the presidency outright, they will face off in a second round on December 29. Also tonight, Zimbabwe senior doctors have released a scathing statement explaining why they are joining their junior colleagues in not turning out to work. They are protesting against the sacking of hundreds of doctors who have been fired because of their strike over poor wages in the Western economic situation. In a statement referring to the bad state of health care, the senior doctor said that a silent genocide continues to be perpetrated upon the people of Zimbabwe. Elsewhere, French Foreign Minister says Paris is seriously considering triggering a mechanism within the Iran nuclear deal that could lead to UN sanctions given Tehran's repeated breach of parts of the 2015 accord with world powers. Jean Vess Ledrin's comments come at a time of heightened friction between Iran and the West, with Tehran breaching the deal's restrictions, 
step by step in response to Washington's withdrawal from the deal and renewed sanctions. And very finally, Mexican president has rejected any U.S. intervention in his country after President Donald Trump said U.S. forces were willing to go and clear out drug cartels. In response to Trump's comments, Andres Manuel Lopez said cooperation, yes. Intervention, no. President Trump announced on Tuesday he will legally designate Mexican drug gangs as terrorist groups. All right, that's it for our international news highlights, making headlines today. Let's begin with our very first story. And government has commenced a scheme for large-scale buyers to directly meet with farmers to purchase their produce as part of efforts to deal with the high production in parts of the country. 1,024 rice farmers at Weta in the Volta region are the first beneficiaries of the scheme. Local rice farmers can now heave a sigh of relief following government intervention to address the increase in production this year. Wienko Ghana Limited would be mopping up all remaining rice left on farms across the country and same is expected from other major processing firms to make the finished products readily available on the market. 2018, we consumed a total of 1.135 million metric tons of rice in this country. Meanwhile, our production capacity by our farmers is just 769,400 metric tons. There's a deficit. The businessmen take advantage of importing. They will not import to only the deficit, but they will end up importing to even cover that one that you have produced. There's a campaign that is going on now called Eat Ghana Rice. We have the best perfume and jasmine rice that those that we even bring from Europe and Asia and other places cannot even match up. The scheme accountant for the Ghana Irrigation Development Authority, Benatete, for his part, said there is adequate capability to increase production and called for more government support. We have a potential land size of 950 hectares, out of which 880 have been developed and irrigable for rice cultivation. We also have a total farmer population of 1,024. We also have a total farmer population of 1,024. We have an average acreage of two acres per head per farmer. The average yield is five tons per hectare. Deputy Agri Minister assured farmers government will continue to subsidize inputs. On to address the issue of the subsidized fertilizer, I want to assure you that government under the planting for food and job has a program and one of the program under that is what we call that the youth in agriculture that and through that program we give subsidized fertilizer to farmers once we want them to produce for us to get enough rice in this country to feed ourselves to cut our import they need to also get the input meanwhile government says it intends to ban rice importation by 2022 All right, you're welcome back uh, in studio here. This is a stance, a weekly program where we uh, usher in our journalists to also share the views and opinions on running national issues. And I would, we're heavy on the issue of uh, local rice production. Later on, we'll be talking about uh, government's plans to construct a cathedral. My name is Parkus Yasari, and I have in the studio with me Rosina, uh, who is a producer here at... Uh, Media General, uh, especially on Onuya FM, where she is mainly based. And of course, uh, Kwame, uh, who is also an online editor here at Media General, 3news.com. Uh, Kwame has been on the show uh, before. This is Rosina's first time on the program. Rosina, good to see you. Thank you, Paul. And good how does it feel? I'm a bit tense. You are. Don't yeah. worry, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah. I promise you. Uh, later on, we'd also be trying to touch base with um, one of our colleagues, Martin Isiru Data, who uh, has also been on the beat with regards to this uh, developing story. Uh, she, he joined the deputy minister, I think, yeah, the uh, deputy uh, minister for to Wita in the Volta yeah. region. Yes. Um, we'd also be speaking to some local uh, rice farmers as well on this subject. So, um, 
who wants to start? Uh, Rosina? Yes, um, I, I think that on this issue of rice, local rice production and then consumption, um, I think for the past two weeks we've dedicated a lot of airtime in the media to this particular cause. And I want to commend the media in the country for this particular effort. You know, most of the time you, you listen to the radio, you watch the news on TV, and all you see is MPP, NDC, the politician and all that. But for once in several months, we have pushed that agenda to get the Ghanaian to be interested in buying and consuming local rice. And I think that it's a very, very, a very good cause that we need to push ahead in other um, sectors of our economy. Mm. Well, I'll come back to you to of find rice. out if it's just about uh, making a clarion call for people to consume local rice, uh, or it goes just beyond that. Kwame, your initial thoughts on this? Um, well, I think we should be happy with what's happening because um, previously there was rather a death in rice production. We couldn't meet the and demands of consumers. And now that farmers are producing and there's a glut, we should be happy with the situation. But um, I, I don't think we can go zero um, on importation because there are foreigners in the country. And I think it's even against some international protocols because, you know, when you have, say, Vietnamese, Koreans in, in Ghana, they may want to consume what they are people have produced or the other people have sent to us. So there may not be a zero importation policy on rice, but at, at least with the excess in production, we can meet the local demand, which would be a boost to our farmers and encouragement to them in, in, in their production process. And one thing we shouldn't uh, forget is that it's also a success to some of the ambitious policies of this government, especially the planting for food and jobs, you know, which was escalated, um, was scaled up to um, plant, uh, what they call the planting for export and rural development period. And then quite recently, they've come up with the mechanization for food and jobs. And that, that tells you that the policies that the government put in place to really beef up agriculture is working. And uh, kudos to the government for, for doing so. Mm. So over the years, we've, uh, as a nation, we've developed a lot of uh, taste for foreign products, uh, be it rice, poultry, what have you. And there's been a little, uh, there's been very little focus on, on local rice production or local rice in itself. And so you, you have the, the population increase and you see the increase in demand for rice. Unfortunately, we're unable to meet that, uh, th that increase in demand yeah. with a consistent production yeah. in, 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 in rice. And like you guys are saying today, we're seeing that clarion call for, for us to get into rice production, for people to develop but a I taste. Think it's going, it's but I, it's, I think it's going to take a long process. Yeah, it's going to be, yeah, it's going going to be a gradual there must process. Be a deliberate yeah. policy. Exactly. Yes. They, they, they mm. should be purposeful mm. in letting the locals consume our, the, the rice our farmers grow. Mm. Other than that, we'll still have the taste. That's why I'm saying that there will not, there will not be a zero... Um, no importation policy sure. on rice because mm -hmm. definitely you have foreigners in the country. Mm -hmm. Foreigners who would want to eat what their people have grown mm -hmm. out there. So there will not be a zero importation policy. No, but even with that, yeah. it's about government protecting its own. No, but... Uh, we saw, yeah. Yes, um, I think that this protectionist approach of getting rice banned in the country, mm -hmm. I heard in some quarters that by 2022, they want Indian to ban the importation, the total person. ban importation it, it, of rice. It, it, I think that yeah, is wrong. International because protocols. we are you know, to, citing to, the examples. Ban the yes, we are citing the examples of countries like Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We don't have the population muzzle to be flexing around like Nigeria. Nigeria mm -hmm. has over 200 million mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Lagos has least, 22 million what, people what, what and Ghana. I, I understand Martin is sitting that is on the phone lines. I know Martin is on the phone lines. Please give me some time. I would indulge Martin. Guys, let's go ahead. So I, I think that the, the, the ban, total ban on the importation of rice is not going to go well. It, that tangent should, should be reviewed. Mm. I think that we should encourage more people to consume local rice mm. or Ghana meat rice mm. and then um, help these farmers who are struggling with a myriad of challenges. Mm. You have issues with irrigation, most of them have to rely on the natural weather. If they can expand irrigation facilities in those areas where rice is grown. And mind you, it looks as though all parts of the country could grow rice. Every part of the mm. country could grow, grow rice. I so think the major we have challenge the capacity. has to do with the marketing. If these farmers are given guaranteed markets, 
Because, they're, 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 I mean, it, within the value chain, there are challenges with regards to production and processing. Yeah. And these challenges can be addressed, for instance, with regards to the uh, production. Sure. If, if they're supported with quality cereals, in yeah. terms of the quality of the rice that is grown and all that. And then when it comes, when it comes to processing, there's a manual and there's the... The mechanized form the of... The mechanized, yeah. mechanized form, which has to do with uh, combined harvesters and all that. All these things help in the eventual quality process sure and but then after that the ready market in terms of transportation and all i think that. that the market is there mm -hmm. the market is there mm. and our, our quality of rice in ghana is better than even what nigeria is boosting off now mm. nigeria has closed its borders to the importation of rice mm. not because their rice is good mm. you know our mm. rice is of a better quality than mm. nigeria mm. but i think that the challenge has to do with the kind of support that these farmers need mm. We talk about warehouses for them and all that. So one district, one warehouse, one what and all. That. Rice doesn't need warehousing. It needs silos where mm. the temperature in there can be controlled mm. so that rice can be stored or the grain can be stored for a, a, a long period of time mm. so that these farmers will not lose their produce. Mm. You saw the videos that we showed. Mm. Some of them, their the, the paddy rice have started sprouting again. Mm. That is loss of money. That is millions of Ghana cities that mm. is being lost. Mm. So I think that some of the issues that these rice farmers have come up with, mm. the challenges that they face, storage facilities, mm. even the road network to these areas mm. are very deplorable and mm. they, these have to be addressed. If these things are addressed, mm. I think that they will have a bearing on the value chain mm. and then at the end of the day, we'll get a kind of rice that they, um, mm. we, are, we are expecting mm. to have um, to mm. consume. Mm. They have issues with um, broken rice. At mm. the end of the day, they go to their mills. They have only one mill mm. in all the um, five regions of the north. We don't have only mm. one mill, mm. you know. Mm. So if the mm. mill is down mm. or if you can't cut your goods to the milling point, it mm. means that you are going to lose a lot of right. money. Can you hold on for me? Let me get on the phone line to speak to uh, Martin. Richie, Richie is giving me a lot of trouble. You know Richie, right? The director. He's giving yeah. me a lot of trouble there. <laughs> Papa Rich. Yes. Richie Martin. Hold on for us. Hello, Martin. Good evening. Good evening, Takwesi, and um, good evening to the, to the rest of the team. Sorry for holding you on uh, for that long. Um, I, I understand you've been on a tour with the Ministry of Agriculture, a tour in a number of places, particularly the Volta region, uh, Weta or so. What, what, what exactly did you go to do there? Well, uh, clearly, I think um, the entire country was caught off guard, if I can, for lack of a better word. I can say that the entire country was caught off guard by the sudden um, increase in production of rice. So Ghana has been producing rice from time immemorial, but for this year, there seemed to have been um, uh, a sudden increase. And of course, the factors are there for us to see that, for instance, because of the introduction of some farming imp um, implements to the farmers and then also the reduction of subsidized uh, fertilizer that has been given to the farmers and extra other activities or policies put in place by government, it seems to have boosted the production of rice. However, I think that although government has consistently said that they had made plans for the production levels, they still didn't weren't able to absorb the, 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 the quantity of rice that was produced. So the idea was that from what was happening in the northern part of the country, let's find out what's happening elsewhere in other um, rice-producing regions. So the Ministry of Agriculture, after visiting the northern part and helping uh, the farmers understand that plants are fought to help them, they went to the Volta region. And apparently the story was the same, that they were producing excess rice, but then... They didn't have off-takers or millers or individuals who could buy directly from the farmers. So the, the new strategy or policy or scheme, for which I think it, it is, the new scheme being introduced by the ministry and government for that matter, is to get the major buyers to go and meet with the farmers so then they can buy directly from the farmers. And so that was a, that, that was a premise for our visit to the, Vol the Volta region. And we were quite amazed by the the extent of production. And the farmers were singing almost the same chorus like their uh, colleagues in the northern part of the country. That, yes, this year the yield has been in excess, but then they don't have the farmers, uh, the, the off-takers, and then also the, the millet that could take the rice directly from them and process it for the market. 
I mean, comparatively, and, and I've enjoyed the submission from my uh, our colleagues um, in the studio, very knowledgeable. And I just want to commend them for that and add that we all know about what is happening in Nigeria and how government of Ghana can take advantage of the fact that even the ban of uh, the closure of the border is more like a blessing in disguise for us. So let's take advantage. Interestingly, the momentum is very high now. If we, do, if we lose this opportunity and let this attention shift again to foreign rights, we are to blame for it as a country, not government, not uh, politicians, but we as an individual. The concern has been that we seem to have a certain taste for foreign rights. And if we are able to deal with that and start believing in our own, trusting our own, enjoying Ghana rights, and it is of the same quality and even better. In fact, it has been proving that our rice we produce here in Ghana, specifically the brown rice, is of the highest quality. And so why do we leave the quality behind and chase what we do not even know the source? And we also found out that some uh, locals who are able to process the rice, so they take the husked rice from the farm, the, what they call the paddy rice, take it through the process and then bag it and sell. What they are doing is that they are foreign bags that are designed with uh, foreign labels but then it is local rice that is inside. That was one of the things we found out. So the, the whole reason for going to the Volta region was to interact with the farmers and then also send the buyers, the wholesale buyers like VMCO uh, and the rest to them so they can buy directly and take the pressure of the farmers. All right. So then, I mean, the, okay. the lamentations have always been a major issue, but that has been dealt with as well. Right. Uh, we appreciate your time, Martin. Thank you so much for your uh, insights on this uh, particular subject. Um, I'll be coming up back to you guys for us to wrap up and to move on to our next discussion. But uh, still on the agri sector, the Greater Accra Poultry Farmers Association uh, is also encouraging the consumption of locally produced chicken to create a sustainable and commercially competitive poultry industry in Ghana. Michael Nyaku Ampim is Vice President of the Greater Accra Poultry Farmers Association. The importation doesn't employ people. It employs people in the other countries. It's just the end, the end product, which is the best that come. That's what we're, we're, we sell. So if we do that, we will create a lot of employment for the country and, and the, the level of employment will come down. As we go into December, we're encouraging every Ghanaian who eats chicken or eats eggs. Uh, so we encourage everybody to eat. And you know, white, white meat is healthy. So, so let's engage ourselves with chicken. And uh, as we bite on it, let's remember uh, the, the farmers who produced it. And then... Well, you have heard the poultry farmers as well, uh, also making a case for uh, the consumption of uh, local poultry. But it's the same thing, you know. We need a consensus on the way forward, you know, so that it doesn't become a knee-jerk reaction. You know, somebody just wakes up and says, look, I think we should begin to consume local rice, and then we make so much noise about it and then we forget it, and then we, we go back to, to, to life as usual. There must be a deliberate policy, I think, on the part of government. And, and Rosina, with regards to the ban, there may not necessarily be an outright ban, but we could decide, for instance, to say that, listen, 80% of the rice we consume should sure. be locally produced. Sure. Sure. That's, support. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's very feasible. That's what we need to do. Then, need to do. On, the other, on the flip side, we can also impose high taxes on, 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 on imported, 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 yeah, yeah. imported rice. Yeah. So yeah. that yeah. becomes a disincentive yeah. for people to exactly. want to go and, and bring sure. it. Exactly. Other than that, yeah. you know, when, when you people. allow more imports, people will stealthily go in and sure. because they have right. the taste bad for foreign rice, they would go in to, to, to take them. Mm. But when you really impose high taxes on mm. them, people will still will want to focus on what uh, people produce mm -hmm. locally. Yeah. And, and aside become, that... It become more expensive yeah. and people yes. would, would, would have Good. to share... Then we also like, reduce our prices because yeah. I, I... But marketing is also very essential, I think. Sure, so. it, it is. It we, is. Need, we need to bring the best quality out of our, of our rice. Yes, um, that's, nobody disputes that mm. the marketing should be top-notch. Mm. But, you know, m most of us still, still think that Ghana's local rice, we still have to... You see stones in them and all that... All those things have passed. Eh? You, you buy local rice on the market now, and you can't even tell the difference between really? it. Really? I haven't eaten one in a while. You should try it. Really? I saw packages of local rice lined up. Yeah, it's great. Good, good mm. packages. The, the, the young ladies I, I interviewed on Business Focus, um, 
I don't remember, but they're doing a good job with uh, rice production. I think it's somewhere in the Volta region also. Yeah. And they, 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 I think at the time they were sourcing for some fans to, to scale up. And I, yeah. I think I, I would, I'll try and get that. And is what the major issue mm. that these farmers have to um, grapple with mm. each, and, each day in and day out. Mm. Banks are looking for landed property in Accra. Mm. Meanwhile, they have their farms somewhere mm. in the northern region. How do you expect and them to have a huge, I mean, there's a huge you don't have cartel the cartel market out there? Right. You know, that, and with that, that's another story imports, altogether. Yeah. You know, and you know? I think that's also one area we need to, to focus on. Government has to really look at that. that. Yeah. I think uh, CTFM started a, a campaign it recently, been, yeah. and we just we heard yeah. that people yeah. had to withdraw yeah. their commercials. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Because people start to benefit yeah. Yeah. for as long as we can continue to put. You, you want to talk briefly on the uh, poultry? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah you, know, you know, that's the excitement that this rice thing has generated. Mm. So, you know, the poultry. It has also, had a ripple you know, effect exactly. on the poultry but industry. The, the, the point I made about the, the, the planting for food and jobs is the same point I'm making with the rearing for, for food, food and, and jobs. jobs. As far as the planting for food and jobs has created a glut in rice production, you, know, you should know that the rearing for food and jobs would also create you know, something like that. So in the near future, the government should put in place me measures so that when there's excess in production, you know, you know we won't see... Yeah. Uh, well, I think the measures are already available. Mm. But well, the I'm problem just being prompted have... uh, for us to go for a break. Uh, so let's just go for the short break and then we'll return to continue. You're watching The Stance live here on TV3. All right, welcome back to The Stance, our weekly show that allows our journalists, our multimedia journalists, to also share their views uh, and opinions on running national issues. And we've been very heavy tonight on the issue of local rice production and consumption as well. My guest is Kwame Amu, who's an online editor here at uh, TV3 Media General. Uh, Rosina as well is a producer and works with Unia FM also here at Media General. Uh, quickly, let's wrap up with uh, the issue of local production of rice and poultry. Rosina? The locally produced poultry is the better one. It is really The foreign good. one has it been on really the seas good. for years mm. and for months. Mm. So it loses its taste. Mm. It is the local ones taste better. Mm. But mostly people go in for these foreign ones because of the price. The pricing. They're cheaper. You know, if you are able to cut down on our import of these um, foreign poultry, mm. we will see um, an increase in um, consumption. Not necessarily. Consumption. It won't work automatically. You know Nigeria was able to do that yeah. uh, under Basanjo where they uh, ban the importation of poultry, but the issue about capacity is very important. You need to make sure that there's this high demand for chicken yeah. or for poultry yeah. and poultry products. And so, before you, you intend to ban them, you need to ensure that you have, there's a capacity. But our farmers to have the capacity to produce what you so, want. So, so the the, what we have to do is the do that. we should yeah. have the 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 policies policies that's brings, all. You know, We need the, that the capacity sector. to be enhanced we have the capacity. before we can. We, we do before have we it. can. Uh, I think the capacity is. But the real issue, you know, that the 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 local chicken, the the local bed is. It's quite expensive, and that's because of the feed. Yes, it's very expensive. It yes. takes about seventy percent of the total. And on a light note, the local ones are stronger than the foreign ones. They are. <laughs> that's 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 true. They so are. So it is very good. Maybe it is if, if government can support the farmers with with feed and all those, you know, it, it will maize and all those things. You know. I should say government should should up its game mm. in the agri mechanization policy. It mm. has. Um, recently launched the mechanization for food mm. and jobs mm. as part of the overall planting for food and mm. jobs yes, program. Mm. And mm. if government ups is game in that sector, that mm. is mechanization for food and jobs, I mm. think will be good to, to meet the consumption um, demand of the population. Mm. And um, I think about two weeks ago, uh, one of our, our, our colleagues, um, Joseph Frimpon, was in Morocco with some farmers. They went to understudy the poultry industry in Morocco. And Morocco is doing very well on the African continent. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, from the knowledge that they, 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 they went to acquire from there, if they come and implement them, I think it would be good to, to really put in place measures mm -hmm. to, to be poultry consumption independent. No, it's it's, it's, it's in very uh, profitable, especially when you're into uh, the is. production of layers. It you is. have the beds that, yeah. that lay eggs. I yeah. mean, it's, it's yeah. amazing. 
But the real cause, like I said, it's is is the, the, the feed, yes. yeah, what goes into feeding them. And I think we can we can dive to that with the, the planting for food, you know, for food that we produce the soya beans, the, yes. the maize for, for, for to serve as feed sure. for the poultry. And if we do that, um, why yeah. not? A, a lot of people, you know, take pleasure in 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 rearing the broilers because that takes just a few Months. weeks, yeah, yeah. So, you yeah. know, to, to yeah. you mm -hmm. know. But even with that, the issue has to do with the marketing. Yeah. Sure, you know, sure. It's, sure. A, it's a sure. big. I think that the, the market is there, the, the capacity is there, mm. but these farmers need support. Mm. You know, I was talking about the bit about cutting down on our imports. Mm. We can't ban the importation of poultry, mm. same as we can't do with mm. the rice, right, yeah. you know. Mm. But if we do a conscious um, program mm. to get these um, foreign imports down, reduce the importation of poultry, I think that is to go a long way because these farmers always complain about the competition that yeah. they will have to go in with these um, foreign best um, poultry that they bring in day mm. in and day out. Mm. You know, they are cheaper. And we but you, you, they, even, they even import dead fowls, dead you, uh, the quality cannot be ascertained. That's why the yes, yes, uh, yes, 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 we have pressure time. We're going to quickly move on to our next uh, subject, which has to do with the building of the cathedral. And we know the finance minister, Ken Oferiata, uh, during the presentation of the 2020 budget statement, announced the construction work on the National Cathedral. And we were told that it will commence in March of 2020. The interdenominational national cathedral that will be located in the heart of the capital stands, stands to help unify the Christian community as a place of worship and promote the national conversation on the role of faith in building Ghana. With the participation of various churches and administration of the cathedral, collective ownership of the project by the churches is envisioned. The Board of Trustees and the Secretariat have been established and preparatory work for the construction of the cathedral have begun. Procurement processes to select a contractor are expected to conclude by the end of the year, and construction is expected to begin in March 2020. Well, government has justified uh, its decision to spend about 9.2 million Ghana cities uh, to relocate the passport office to make way for the construction of the National Cathedral. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs says it is ready or it already um, has plans uh, of moving the current uh, passport office to a new location to help roll out its uh, chip and bedded passports. Now the minority in parliament is already raising red flags over the issue but it's prudent uh, for, is it prudent for the nation to spend over nine million cities to relocate the passport office now? There's so many more questions have been lingering on the minds of uh, several Ghanaians, and I'm sure they've been living on the minds of our journalists as well. Uh, Rosina, uh, your, your take on this? I have a question. Why do we think that building a national cathedral is a priority for Ghana? Haven't we gone beyond that argument? Yeah. We, we have. Mm -hmm. We have. But with these issues that are coming up, mm. we, we still have to revisit this issue again. If we had not made the decision of building this cathedral coming, we may not have found ourselves in this um, issue that we find ourselves yeah. in now. You know, Na building a national cathedral really. But I think we can't stop them for now. Just like uh, Parkinsi said, we've gone beyond that. Now sure. they are demolishing structures. Yes. The president has inaugurated a board of trustees. There's been fundraising. Fundraising all over. in February. So now we've gone beyond that. But what I, I, I and I, I should quote the president. He said it is. A priority of his priorities which means that he's going all the way to get it done but i think what what i find a big problem with, with this 9.2 billion cities into a new passport office is that you know already we have four passport offices in accra sure. already we have four passport and offices a new in one accra. in tema oh, recently good you know why why do you why won't you rather upgrade the facilities in the you know, greater Accra? There's one at the Accra Digital Office, which is doing so well. I, I've filled passport forms for people. We go there. Within minutes, they get their passport done. Within 10 days, they are made to come for their passport. So why don't we upgrade facilities and such? But rather, rather want to go into 
vote 9.2 billion cities for passport when should, there are social, they basic social much? amenities we've not been able to, to meet. So I, I, I think government need to set some priorities right. What is this uh, cheap embedded password? All good and, 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 and well, but we need to rather concentrate on the facilities that are available. There's one at Kim with the old passport office. There are so throngs of people go there for their passport. I talked about the digital office. Aside, aside the ones in the greater Agra region, there are others. Koforido has one, Ho has one, Tamali has one, Kumasi, Sunyani, Takradi. So we should rather upgrade those facilities than rather go in and build a new one with 9.2 billion cities, when there are basic social amenities we've not been able to meet, especially with the free SHS, where so, 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 so. Are, are lacking in some mm. schools, you know, uh, hospitals we are lacking, ambulances are not available, and, and so on and so forth. So, so it's the the relocation of this password officers costing 9.2 billion cities. Yes. Yes. And, and we're, 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 we're putting the money we're to told, build a new. We're, so the cathedral is estimated to cost a hundred million dollars. Yes, a hundred million dollars. Of which government will provide seed money. Oh, uh, 20 million. 20 million, which is 20 a million. in the which first. Which was, which was going, so, was going so, to provide only the yes, land. So, the land. So, and now we are hearing about 20 million. Yes. So, so, what so was, some people have said that this is in sharp contrast to what government sure. had earlier what, said yeah, or what government's position this, earlier yes. said. And who are these faceless individuals who are giving us the 80 million? Can't we know? Don't you have? Is a this a matter of? We should. Um, we should know. Of curiosity. If, yes. Yes. It is. Know, it's, if it's, we are having public projects, um, um, how do you call it? Spend mm. twenty million dollars mm. on a project that we were initially told that uh, was going not to a dime of government funds is yeah. going to into it. Our equity as a state was only the land that we are going to use in building. Okay. It. So Dennis and was getting the land uh, as a correction. Dennis, I get you. That's nine point two million cities yes, yeah. for the Ghana relocation. Cities. Sure. And yeah, you're talking about government having to yes. expend some money. Yes, expend some money. You know, mm. these judges bungalows that were mm. pulled down recently. Mm. We don't even know how much it will cost for mm. us to relocate these judges. But we've moved them anyway. Mm. We had to bring the bu buildings down. Those buildings were less than 10 years old. Mm. You know, and now we are hearing about having to spend 9.2 million Ghana CDs on a passport office that has to be rebuilt because we have to make way for a cathedral. Why are we bent on building the cathedral in that enclave? Mm. Because that's a car is already choked. Mm. That's my if you problem with the, the whole project. And for, are, me, we, for me, I'm not averse to building a cathedral because, you know, with I all am. humility, I'm a member of the clergy. Pagus, I hear you're also a member of the clergy. <laughs> a clergy. You're deacon in church. Clergy. No. Yeah, that's, clergy. Yeah, yeah. That's what the so for, is. Me, that's for me, I'm not averse to building a cathedral. Mm. It's all good and well. Mm. But you see, why are we so bent on getting it close to you know state institutions like the Parliament House, you know, the and Independence course, Square and you know why? so that it even defeats the national security mentality where if someone comes and just puts in a, a, a bomb, it would just erase every and project. And there are major government why don't we, why, why don't we take it to say central areas? Well, we start the church, the chapel square. Why don't we build it there? You see, to get more people, you know, it will even help the local economy in those areas. And I, I, I think government is picking and choosing its decentralization process. You know, you, you talk about voting yes to decentralize power or devolute power. But now when it comes to uh, uh, building the church, you want to centralize, you know, projects, state projects at an enclave. And with this, you can decentralize, go and put it, say, in the northern region or in the upper west, upper Or the outskirts of the greater yeah. Accra region. You know, so, so we, has we a vast decentralize our national project. area of land that we could have. Everything in one place, I, I, I don't think it, it, it's... Yes. Okay, we've got to go. Uh, what are your picks for this week? I'll Top go first. Stories? Um, I, 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 I struggle to understand the tussle between the Iyoko and then the Office of the Auditor General. Mm. I think that there should be an out-of-court settlement on this issue. But nobody's in court. We are in court already. The Auditor General is the in court. Okay, so General the Auditor has General the has gone you know, for... Because the bad blood He's between these two institutions okay. is not going to help our fight against... No, but there's nothing wrong with him going to court. There's nothing wrong with to, it. To but after the ruling, mm. there is going to be a loser 
and there is going to be a winner. Mm -hmm. And after the ruling, if whichever way it goes, it is going to better entrench the but already I've seen a letter that today is from, yeah, from, from the yeah. yes, we've that seen that it's going to go ahead and sure. that it's called the powers sure. to investigate. Sure. sure, nobody is disputing and, that. Uh, so but that, for me. And that's why I think the Auditor General think, going to court is, is material because it, we need to get the interpretation. We are not saying it's immaterial. Mm. He believes that his rights as an individual mm. has been trampled upon by the Yoko. So I think that he has a point of going to the court. Mm. People go to court and want to have an, um, an out-of-court settlement, not because they don't have a case, not because that they, no, they don't have a case. I, 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 I think, think, think we need just it's to, to find It's not to litigate, yes. 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 It's not to litigate. Right? Yes. I think we need to finality to this. Sure. But because... His suggestion is that Iyoko doesn't have the power yeah, to investigate the matter. He issues the Office of, of Special of, of Procurement. Sure. And Iyoko seems to suggest that, that we do. they have the mandate. Yeah. yeah. You know, so we need to bring some finality to this. And so that's yeah. why he's in yeah. court. So yes, I, I mind you, this is an issue that got, uh, it was a, a same petition yeah. on matters of procurement. That's that's that led yes, to, that led yes, to, that yes. So, yes. So, so, so we need the conspiracy uh, theory is that um, government, not government, yes. but there is an engineering yeah, to get them out of office. Out. But of course, the letter from Yoko today yeah. uh, clearly stated that they are not in any way mm. trying to remove him from office. We didn't expect any less in any way. We didn't expect any less in any way. Yes, yes, yes. But I, I feel Yoko coming out with a statement. You know, sadly, they, they said that usually they don't come out to issue mm. statements yeah. when they mm. like, do not do issue and, statements you, you, when you, you, are invest, you are and these are some of the reasons that do left it. to me alone yeah. i think that there should be an arbiter in this issue we should have an out the of court is the law court <laughs> and that's where the <laughs> yes we, we, yeah, we know the attorney general once yeah. once we, once, we can once get in a while you know contract we can get the attorney general to be the arbiter in this case maybe the attorney general we should but they have you know because these are anti drug bodies that should be working hand in hand uh, guys, know? we've got to go. Uh, it's 11 p.m. already. Thank you very much for joining us here on The Stands, our weekly uh, show, uh, which uh, allows our multimedia journalists to come and also share their opinions and views and suggestions on ri running national debates. Tonight, I was excited and privileged to have uh, with me Rosina, uh, who is right here with us here at Media General, and Kwame Amu, his second time yeah. over. Yeah, thanks very much for watching. For more news, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com. Thanks to uh, our producer, Koshi, and also to the cameraman, uh, Amando and uh, Nipens, and also to the director, uh, Richie. Thanks, guys. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing.